Regardless of how good or bad you are at Pokemon, if your team sucks, then there isn't going to be much for you to do. But if you have a good team, yet you have no idea how to use it, then there isn't going to be much for you to do either. So how do you go about making a competitive Pokemon team? The most important thing to note when you build a team is what roles your Pokemon fill on your team. A Pokemon should be on your team for one of three reasons. One, they act as a defensive check. Two, they give an offensive presence or pressure. Or three, they provide some sort of utility on your team. When you're building a team, you need to find a viable Pokemon or a core to build your team around. And you're probably thinking, what the f are cores. Cores are two to three Pokemon that cover for each other's weaknesses and enable each other's strengths. For example, fire, water, grass, or fairy fighting and steel. Those types cover each other's weaknesses and enable each other's strengths. So make sure you pair two to three Pokemon that synergize with each other and find the best supporting Pokemon for your core. Let's talk about some basic rules a defensive core will fill in competitive play. There are physical walls that are do-it-all tanks for beating physical attacking Pokemon, or special walls that are used for special attackers. We also have mixed walls who knock two birds with one stone, which is handy if you have a very offensive team or you don't have spots for multiple defensive Pokemon. Another important defensive role are status absorbers or reflectors, or in a similar vein, Pokemon with magic guard or magic bounce, who you can use to swap in when a Pokemon sets up hazards or status conditions, where you can either take those status conditions or reflect those status conditions back onto your Pokemon. And finally, we have defensive pivots. These are Pokemon specialized for swapping in and out with ease to tank your opponent's hits while keeping momentum on your team. Now let's talk about offensive roles for your team. These are the Pokemon that are responsible for inflicting the most amount of damage that will knock out your opponent. For instance, we have Setup Sweepers. These are Pokemon whose objective is to be swapped in and have so much speed and attack power where they can knock out your opponent's Pokemon before they get a chance to strike back. This is usually accomplished with a setup move that boosts your Pokemon stats, like Swords Dance, Shell Smash, or Dragon Dance. You can add a speed boosting item like a Choice Scarf where you can inflict a lot of damage and outspeed a majority of your opponent's Pokemon, or an attack boosting item like Choice Specs where you can deal a lot of damage with a faster Pokemon like Greninja. Hell, you can even make Trick Room teams to turn your super slow, bulky, and powerful Pokemon into speedy sweepers that your opponent can't resist. Speaking of slower and stronger Pokemon, there are also Wall Breakers. Wall Breakers are Pokemon that don't have to set up or need the highest speed stat like sweepers do to perform well. They are responsible for dealing the most amount of damage as physically possible. Like their name implies, these Pokemon can even break your opponent's best defensive Pokemon. Lastly, we have Offensive Pivots or Speed Control. Who are not only responsible for swapping in and out with ease like defensive pivots are, but these Pokemon are intended to apply pressure, pivoting in frequently to threaten the revenge kill or threaten the opponent to switch their Pokemon and possibly sweep your opponent in the late game. But now, let's go over utility Pokemon, which are Pokemon that are responsible to make the Pokemon battle work in your favor. First off, we have Hazard Setters, which are Pokemon that could set up Stealth Rocks, Spikes, or Sticky Webs. These Pokemon are typically used as Suicide Leads, which are Pokemon you sacrifice just to get your hazards up. While there are Hazard Setters, there are also Hazard Removers movers, or there are certain Pokemon that use moves such as Defog, Rapid Spin, or Port Change to remove any hazards your opponent set on you. A classic PC utility to have on your team is Status. Make sure to throw in a Pokemon who can use Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, or Thunder Wave because those moves are really useful and really appreciated. You also have Clerics, who can use moves like Aromatherapy or Wish to recover any health or status conditions your Pokemon have on your team. There are Pokemon who can set up Screens or Aurora Veil, which help your team tank hits from your opponent's Pokemon. And finally, you have Pokemon who can use Tailwind, which double your team's speed. You can easily encounter utility Pokemon by using moves such as Taunt or Pokemon like Tapu Fini where status conditions are prevented for Pokemon on the ground. On the ground! If you want to win Pokemon battles in an efficient and quick way, you're going to need to use weather teams. If you want to play like a bitch, you want to gain some elo, and you really want to put your opponent in turmoil, then use rain teams, sun teams, or sand teams, or hail teams. Because I'm telling you, the moment that you set a weather condition on the battle, the weather condition itself puts so much pressure onto your opponent. If you want to play like a bitch and not use any skill in a competitive battle, use a weather team. With all that shit aside, team building in Pokemon is fundamentally a battle to fit all the different roles you want onto your team. Remember that there is no such thing as a perfect team, so make sure that your teams counter and check as many Pokemon as physically possible. At the end of the day, make sure you have fun, but there is one thing that you need to remember. Beware of Shell Smash Buff Shuckle.